So what's going on guys, it is JM, it is Speedbox here, make sure you guys subscribe to this channel before you click on to any of the videos. Also comment below in the comment section if you guys have any opinions of what I'm saying in any of my videos, like always it is appreciated if you guys could drop me a quick sub or two on my channel. So, Sol Canelo Alvarez, can you beat this man over 12 rounds? Can you get a decision against this man on the scorecards? In my opinion, Gennady Golovkin, when he faces Canelo Alvarez on September the 16th, he's got to knock Canelo Alvarez out. Because I'm telling you now, if this fight is competitive, which I think it will be, and it goes to the scorecards, then there's no chance Gennady Golovkin is winning the fight. Absolutely no chance. Like, I'm telling you now, to win this fight on points... Golovkin would have to knock Canelo Alvarez down multiple times and totally dominate the fight to get a victory on points against Canelo Alvarez. If this fight is competitive, but you feel like Gennady Golovkin won the fight by a few rounds, he isn't getting that fight, I'm telling you now. And the first example of this, right, is when Canelo Alvarez fought Austin Trout in 2013, when he fought Austin Trout. And... That fight, in my opinion, was very close. I had it around either way. Obviously, Canelo Alvarez had the knockdown. So I thought if Canelo Alvarez got the fight due to the knockdown, then I couldn't really complain. But I had Austin Trout winning that fight by one or two rounds. But the fact that one judge had that fight 118 to 109 to Canelo Alvarez, that, that was an absolute fucking joke. What? Who was scoring that fight to have it 118-109? To Canelo Alvarez, like how like Austin Trout was outworking Canelo Alvarez in a lot of them rounds. Canelo Alvarez was obviously the harder puncher in there. He was hurting um, Austin Trout a little bit in the fight. He was landing the harder punchers, but I felt like Austin Trout was outworking him with the jab in most of the rounds. So I had Austin Trout winning the fight by a round or two. But another judge had it 116 111 to. Canelo Alvarez and another judge had it 115, 113. I think that was the most um, plausible scorecard. Them other scorecards were absolute jokes, in my opinion. Like, pfft. that was the first example. And then you get the Aris Landy Lara fight. Me personally, I had Canelo Alvarez winning that fight. And, and I know a lot of people disagree with that. And that's their opinion. But in my opinion, I felt that Canelo Alvarez beat Aris Landy Lara. It was a close fight, and the 117-111 scorecard, like, that was an absolute joke as well in that fight. But the 115-113, yeah, that seems about right for Canelo Alvarez in that fight. Because Erez Landley Lara started very well in that fight. He was moving, using the movement fantastic there. Very accurate with the shots against Canelo Alvarez. But when his cornerman, Canelo Alvarez's trainer, told him at the end of the third round... Was it the end of the third? It was the end of the fourth round. It was one of them rounds anyway. He told him, you need to start going to this body when Eris Landy's moving. You need to start going to his body and landing the body shots. And that's exactly what Canelo Alvarez did. He started picking up the pace, started landing the hard body shots. And I know a lot of people don't like scoring the body shots. And I don't know why. Because a body shot landing, in my opinion, is just the same as getting a headshot landed. So... I don't understand people arguments saying, oh, but he was only landing body shots. Like, what do you mean? So you're telling me if you hit a fighter in the body, that's not a scoring punch. Shut the fuck up and don't watch boxing. Yeah, Canelo Alvarez was landing the hardest shots to the body on Eris Landy Lara. And Eris Landy Lara, he wasn't throwing anything. He was on his bike. Like, it was like he was in a Tour de France, my brother. Like, what the fuck was he doing in the last... Five or six rounds, Eris Landy Lara. He was just moving around the ring and not really throwing anything. And against Canelo Alvarez, that's a mistake. Like, you can't have a close fight with Canelo Alvarez. Like, you can't do it. It doesn't matter if you think you're four or five rounds up against Canelo. In my opinion, you're not getting that decision. Canelo Alvarez is a cash cow. And in terms of boxing politics, Canelo Alvarez is a big figure. So you can't go in there... And win six rounds against Canelo Alvarez or think you've won six or seven rounds and then start getting on your bike. Because you're going to lose the fight. I'm telling you now, you're going to lose the fight. So that was a mistake by Eris Landy Lara. I had Canelo winning that fight by a couple of rounds. And then 
you had the Miguel Cotto fight as well. The Miguel Cotto fight, in my opinion, was a close fight. It was a very close fight. I had it one round either way, similar to the Austin Trout fight. I thought that Miguel Cotto was doing well, moving and hitting all night long against Canelo Alvarez. Canelo Alvarez, again, was the harder puncher in there. But I felt that Miguel Cotto was outworking Canelo in a lot of the rounds. And he was doing well, sticking and moving against Canelo Alvarez. And it was a very close fight. And Miguel Cotto did well in the last few rounds as well in the championship round. So I had that fight very close and had it around either way. Maybe two rounds either way. But the scoring, Jesus Christ. Right. You had Burt Clement scoring the fight. 118, 110, Canelo Alvarez. You had Dave Moretta, 119, 109. And you had John McKay, 117, 111. Like, shh. It's like, how can you win against Canelo Alvarez? Like, you put on a hard performance like Miguel Cotto did against Canelo Alvarez. Like, gave Canelo a very tough fight. But the scorecards don't reflect that. Like, one judge gave Miguel Cotto one round in the whole fight. How are you giving Miguel Cotto one round in that fight? Like, what are you watching? That's what I, that's what I want to know because that is just so dodgy. It's unbelievable. You can't watch the Miguel Cotto Canelo Alvarez fight and give Miguel Cotto one round. Like, how is that possible? Like, that's, to me, a fucking joke. And Miguel Cotto, after that fight, was disgusted. He left the ring. He didn't do any interviews or anything like that. And you would be because you've just put on a good performance against a young, hungry fighter. You gave it your all. And a fucking judge has given you one round when you should have got at least five rounds. At the least. And it's just ridiculous that that was the scoring in the Miguel Cotto fight. And then you get the Amir Khan fight. And even though Canelo didn't knock Amir Khan out. So this doesn't really matter. But Amir Khan outboxed Canelo Alvarez for four rounds. Like he outboxed him soundly. He was moving very well Amir Khan. He was frustrating Canelo Alvarez with his movement. But obviously Amir Khan started to slow down. I think the added weight was a problem for Amir Khan. And Canelo Alvarez started to get into range and was um, landing the shot, starting to dig in to Amir Khan and it was slowing Amir Khan down in the fight. And then obviously we all know, hitting with that big right hand in the sixth round and that was all she wrote. But at this time of the stoppage, the scores were 48-47 to um, Amir Khan on one judge's scorecard. But the other two judges had it 49, 46, 48, 47 to Canelo Alvarez. Like, how? <laughs> how are you having Canelo Alvarez three rounds up in that fight up until the stop is? Like, how? Like, it's just ridiculous to score, and it's, it's a joke when it comes to Canelo Alvarez, and it's a real problem, I'm telling you now. So if Gennady Golovkin goes in there and has a very competitive fight with Canelo Alvarez and it goes to 12 round um, scorecards, then he's not winning the fight. I'm sorry, he is not winning that fight because Canelo has too much pull, he's too much of a cash cow and he's not winning the fight. Don't get me wrong, if Canelo Alvarez looks like he's won the fight after 12 rounds, I'll say that, I'll say yeah, Canelo Alvarez won the fight over 12 rounds and he deserved the decision, but... If, if you think Gennady Golovkin deserves the decision after the 12 round fight and he don't get it, don't be too shocked, don't be too appalled because I'm telling you now, this is what happens in Canelo Alvarez fights. Canelo Alvarez is a cash cow in boxing, similar to what Floyd Mayweather was. Like Mayweather got a few questionable decisions in his career as well. Obviously the Castillo fight, the Oscar De La Hoya fight. A lot of people thought Oscar De La Hoya did enough to win the fight. But obviously Floyd got the victory. And even in his fight against Floyd Mayweather. Um, fucking um, Canelo Alvarez. like The judge scored it 114-114. <laughs> and this was against Floyd Mayweather, the biggest star in boxing at the time. 
and they still tried to rob Floyd. Like, how could you give that fight a draw? Like, Floyd Mayweather won that fight easily against Canelo Alvarez, and at the time, Canelo was still pretty green. He tried to go in there and outbox Floyd Mayweather. Big mistake, but the fight that one judge had it 114-114, that was one of the worst scorecards I've ever seen in boxing. But it is what it is with Canelo Alvarez, and as long as he's top of the tree, as long as he's the cash cow in the States in terms of boxing, then he's going to get these decisions, and it's going to happen. They have a lot of pull, Canelo Alvarez and his team, in the sport of boxing. So it is what it is. So Gennady Golovkin on September the 16th, he's got to go in there, and he's got to really beat Canelo Alvarez, and he's got to stop him because if this is a competitive fight and it goes to the scorecards then Golovkin's not winning so yeah I've gone on a bit here but I'm just getting my point across in my opinion on this so yeah comment below in the comment section it is 